Good morning to you all and welcome to this uh, second of the special stream services during this uh, particular time when we have to work in this way rather than meet in our normal way. Do trust the Lord will bless you as we do come to worship together and consider his word together. just want to read as we begin a couple of verses from Psalm 27, Psalm 27 verses 4 and 5. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in, the shelter <coughs> in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Let's pray. Gracious God and Father, we do thank you that we can again come together on this your day to worship and honour and see to glorify you. We do so in unusual circumstances, but Lord, we know that you are with us. I pray, Lord God, you will bless us now. Help us, Lord, and do draw near to each one, we do pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we do welcome you, and uh, as you're all aware, we are dealing with a very difficult situation at this time. It's the result of the uh, coronavirus and the restrictions that have been placed quite properly upon us. We're not able to meet and worship in our usual way, but we thank, are thankful that we can take advantage of the technology that's available to be able to broadcast our services as we are doing now. Uh, very thankful for all those that commented on the uh, time we did this last week, and we pray that again the Lord will be pleased to bless us and help us and encourage us as we do meet in this way. And we uh, would appreciate your feedback if you're able to do so, uh, any comments you have, and we can take those on board and seek to improve these uh, as we do go on over the next few weeks. I'd just like to read now again from the psalm, Psalm 121, and I read the whole of that psalm, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, for where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your, right hand, on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Let's pray. Again, O oh Lord, we do seek to come into your presence. We do praise you, Lord, that we have this glorious opportunity to bring our prayers before your throne. The Lord, although you are the great and the awesome, the all-powerful God indeed, the all-holy God, yet, Lord, you do delight to hear the prayers of your people. And we pray, Lord God, you be pleased to hear our prayers now. Lord, we do stand in difficult circumstances, but Lord, we thank you that none of these things are unknown to you. The Lord, you are indeed always in control. The Lord, your will and your purpose will always be fulfilled. O oh Lord, give us the confidence, give us the knowledge, the strength we need to trust in you in these circumstances. And do prayer help us especially today, Lord, as we do meet together, we pray for each one in their own homes, wherever they might be, that will be seeking to share with us in this act of worship. O oh Lord, bless each of them. You know, Lord, the particular needs that they have. We pray that you would reach out to them. Do remember those, Lord, that are unwell or are suffering in other ways. We ask, Lord, that your strength will be upon them, that, Lord, your spirit will rest upon them. And, Lord, may they truly rejoice at your great grace and mercy being given to them. We do think particularly, Lord, of the uh, problem that we do face, the effect the coronavirus has had. 
And Lord, we do pray that you will be with all the authorities, that they may take, make the right decisions, they may guide and lead in the proper way. Remember all those, Lord, in the NHS, in the emergency services, in other institutions that, Lord, are there to seek to help and aid us at this very trying time. We pray, Lord, that all provision will be made, that wisdom will be applied, that, Lord, we ask that you would give the strength and give the ability to all that are involved in many different ways in seeking to deal with this situation. Do you remember, Lord, particularly those that have contracted the virus, and we pray, Lord, that you would be with them, that, Lord, you would uh, give them healing, you give them strength, and, Lord, we do express our deep sorrow at the numbers that have died as a result of this, and we pray, Lord God, you will be with every family, every person who is bereaved at this time, that your grace, your love will reach out toward them, that, Lord, you be to them all that they stand in need of, O oh Lord, may they truly rejoice at your love and the experience of your grace in their lives. Lord, you know exactly what they feel. Draw near and meet that need and give strength, we pray. And Lord, we do remember particularly all those in the church. We thank you, Lord, for each one and pray that you would be with them. And Lord, encourage them. We think particularly of our students and especially for Nicole uh, uh, for Naomi this week as he continues in his studies we pray Lord God that you would be with him and help and encourage him Lord continue to direct and guide him we pray and then Lord we do remember Nicole who is celebrating her birthday on Wednesday we ask Lord that you would be with her Lord we know that she is now studying at home not able to go to Colchester we pray Lord God that you would uh, watch over her and help and encourage her in this and indeed, Lord, do be pleased to speak to each and every one of us as we in a moment turn together to your word. Oh Lord, make that word live to us, make that word real to us. Lord, show us of yourself. Open up, Lord, all the things you'd have us to know, we do pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, could we turn together now to that psalm uh, that I read, the 122nd Psalm, and I just want to make a few comments on that as we do come together uh, in this way now. The title given to this psalm is My Help Comes From the Lord. And this is the second of the series of psalms that are known as the Psalms of Ascents, which as I was saying last week, are, it is thought, designed to encourage those that are coming to Jerusalem to worship at the special feasts at the different times of the year. And it's thinking about the preparation that they make uh, for those times of worship. We too are coming together to worship, not in exactly the same way. We no longer go to a temple, there's no necessity for that. And indeed, Lord, we can still worship even though we don't come to our own building. This is not a temple, it's just a place where we can normally meet together, but we meet together in a special way today. But the same principle applies, that as we do prepare for that, as we do think about that, so we ask that the Lord would prepare our hearts and make us realise what it is that we are actually involved in. And what we are involved in, of course, is an amazing thing, a tremendous thing, that we can come and worship the true and the living God, the almighty God. What a glorious privilege this is. And Lord, how we must be very careful and how we must be concerned to approach him in the right and the proper way. The psalm we look at today, it has a different tone to the one that we saw last week. Last week, the psalmist there was expressing his distress. He was troubled. He was concerned, but he knew the Lord was with him. Uh, this uh, psalm today strikes a much more positive note as the psalmist does declare his desire as he comes to worship. Uh, again, we don't know exactly who wrote this psalm. We don't know exactly when it was written but we can share in what was actually written by the psalmist. And he speaks to us of all of the help that he knows he can receive. He says, verse 1, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? As the psalmist perhaps was making his way towards Jerusalem, 
Uh, he would have seen the hills, he would have seen in the distance the glorious temple that had been built and his heart would be rejoicing as he is preparing for that. Uh, he would no doubt take in also into account the, uh, the grandeur, the wonder of the creation that he saw round about him. He, he saw these hills in all their glory and this was a great delight and joy to him. But he poses the question, uh, as he looks at these things, from where does my help come? And he was aware of the fact, of course, that his help, the help that he needed, did not come from the wonderful things that he saw. The help did not come from the creation, but actually comes from the creator. Because he looks beyond that creation and the wonders and glories of it to see the even greater glory and wonder of the one who brought all these things into being. And so he answers his own question in verse 2 when he says, My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that is a glorious source of comfort, of strength and of help. That the God to whom we come is not a God of our own making, not a God that we sort of thought up that would be ideal for us. The God to whom we come is the one true God. And he is the God of creation. He is the God who has brought all things into being. He is the God who has performed all things. He is the God who sustains all those things. And he is the God whose glory is actually seen in those things that he has created. It is very foolish and it's very sad that there are those who tend to only think of the creation, of the things that they see, and they seek to draw their help from that. They seek to draw their strength from that. No, we must look beyond that. We see the glory of creation. We see the wonders of creation. But we should, that should lead us to a deeper awareness of the far grander glory of our God who is the creator. He has made all things. He has formed us. He has sustained us. He watches over us. And this is the psalmist's source of help. And we all stand in need of help. We, there are many different ways in which that can be applied, particularly at this time. It may be some to whom are here in this, you have contracted the disease yourself, or you know members of your family have it. You're very worried. You're very troubled uh, as to what is going to happen. Well, look to that God who is the true God of help, who is able to be with us in these situations. And as the psalmist does that, so he goes on to think of and speak of the particular security that this brings to him. As I said earlier, we have no idea of his background. We don't know if there are particular things that are worrying him, particular things concerning him. But as he thinks of his God and the help that his God brings, so he has given a security. He says in verse 3, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. God will keep him stable. He will keep him secure. He will keep him in the place where he should be. He doesn't have to rely on his own strength. Indeed, it's foolish so to do. He relies on the strength of God. And that God is the God who never slumbers, who doesn't sleep. Uh, as he goes on to say, behold, in verse 4, behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Uh, we all sleep. We all slumber. We all lose our attention. God never does. He is always there. As one commentator says, there is not momentary slumber, least of all actual sleep, dare be thought of in reference to him. God never sleeps. God ever watches over us. God ever keeps us. God is ever, ever beside us and aiding us. And what a comfort that is. Uh, what a, a great assurance that is in the particular uh, situation we find ourselves to be in today as there is so much that is of deep and proper concern. God is there keeping us secure, keeping us stable, and constantly doing that. There's not one moment 
One second where that constant strength and security is there. And as the psalmist goes on, so he gives us more of an insight into what that means for him. He speaks of the Lord, of God, being his true guardian. He says in verse uh, 5, The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. The Lord is the keeper. He is the one who keeps it. When he speaks of the shade on your right hand, that would have been particularly applicable perhaps to this psalmist who would be making his way to Jerusalem to worship the Lord in the temple. Uh, and he would have been doing that when the sun was at its highest, when it was very hot, and he would be very grateful of any shade that there would be made available during that time. And he says, this is what God does. And it goes beyond, of course, just the sense of shade. It speaks of protection. It implies that protection, that God is ever giving protection. He may have come on a very long journey. He may have come through dangerous parts and would have been worried about what would happen there. But God was there protecting him. God was there ever watching over him. Uh, he is always keeping him. Uh, in another psalm, in Psalm 91, uh, we read these words in the first two verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. Our keeper, our God, is always on the throne. He is always acting on behalf of his people. He's always looking down and shielding them from all harm. And when we find ourselves in difficulty, when we find ourselves perhaps in danger, or we find ourselves in physical and emotional pain, these things happen. God permits these things to happen. That not to us that he may hurt us, but that he will ensure that they don't harm us. He ever watches over us. And he goes on. He is that one who is always the protector. Verse 6 he says, The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Again in Psalm 91 we read in verse 6, Nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. Whatever it is, whatever the problems are, and they're very real, and they're very hard and difficult to cope with, and we certainly cannot do so in our own strength, but the Lord assures us that he will be helping us. He will be aiding us. He will ensure that we are kept. And we won't know, as it were, that great heat of the sun. We don't know the dangers of the night, because we're always under the control of who he who is the truly almighty God. And then as he draws the psalm to a close in the last two verses, verses 7 and 8, he says in verse 7, The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will avoid that prediction. Uh, it's not that we won't commit an evil sadly we all do sin we all do fail him on occasions but he has set forth the means whereby that can be fully dealt with in our Lord Jesus Christ he has paid the penalty he has paid the price that our sin might be forgiven and, and this again is a great encouragement to us in times of need in times of trouble that he has done this glorious work of grace and he keeps our life. Uh, it is good to, to know and to be assured of the fact that our lives are in his hands. And he watches over us. He is the one who gives us that life. But of course it goes much deeper and much further than that. Because in Christ Jesus we have a life that is eternal life. And he keeps that life. And that eternal life can never ever be taken from us. We may be, we will die physically unless the Lord returns. Prior to that fight, all of us will die. But if we're in Christ, 
We know the assurance of that life. And this, of course, is what the Apostle Paul so, uh, expressed so clearly and so powerfully when writing to the Philippians in Philippians 1 and verse 21, he says, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, yet which, which shall I choose? I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to, part, to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. And in that uh, keeping our life, in that securing our life, the Lord is very active. The last verse, verse 8 says, The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Again, one commentator says, Generally speaking, there is nothing to which the providential care of God does not extend. One has the feeling that every sphere of influence to which this care extends has been touched. Such treatment of the subject carries with it a sturdy reassurance. Every step of our way, everything we do, everywhere we go, our going out, our coming in, we know at the moment those things are very restricted, but he is able to help us. He is able to help us. And he will keep us in all those situations. Just close with some other verses from one of the Psalms, Psalm 73 and verse 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. So as we think of the confidence that this psalmist had, May that confidence be ours. May we know what it is to truly trust and rest in him. May we know that our help always comes from the Lord and that there may be no greater help in that. So may the Lord be pleased to apply his word to us and bless us each one. And we do continue to remember each one in our prayers. Let's pray. Loving God and Father, we thank you for this testimony the psalmist has recorded for us. And we pray, Lord God, that that testimony may be ours as well. We know that help that you alone are able to give, that, Lord, your grace will rest upon us. Apply your word to us. Be with us, each one, we do pray. Amen.